Hi everyone, Jacqueline here. So today, in this video, I want to give you an update on how the hydrangea cuttings turned out that I took probably about two months ago. And I took them from these Annabelles here that are in full bloom and looking magnificent. And we're going to plant them as well in this video. I want to say that doing the cuttings, taking the cuttings and putting them in water, is got to be the most easy process to do for starting hydrangeas. It works really, really well. The only thing is you have to be patient. As I said, I took these cuttings about two months ago, actually a little bit longer than that. I would say it's about 10 or 12 weeks. I'm going to show you what they look like now and then we'll plant them. But it is so easy. Anybody can do it. And quite honestly, it's the most economical method to increase the number of hydrangeas you have in your garden. So we have a super windy day, so I'm hanging on to the jar, but here are the hydrangea cuttings. These are the Annabelles that I took, and this is about 10, 12 weeks in, and you can see here what they've done along the stem for where the roots should be, uh, which is very interesting. I've been changing the water on these too, but so this is kind of how they form, and they're still firm and everything. And then if we take them out of the jar, you will see the fine roots on them and they're not really big roots these are very slow to root um, but it works and each one of these we can put into the ground with this one having the least amount of roots on it but I'm still gonna put it in and we'll see how it does they're pretty resilient so you can see the roots which are higher up than on the nodes where I cut them which is where I was expecting a lot of the roots to come some did some didn't but you definitely got some roots here and they're and they're worth putting in and I left these stems longer than the last time I did cuttings and you can see here this one even has roots coming out of the bottom and this one's just starting to get roots coming out of the bottom and we have roots on the sides so we're going to plant these today now the best method to plant them of course is to make sure I plant them up to about here or here to make sure that I cover those roots well with soil if you want to boost the plant you could dip it in some rooting hormone if your roots are small like these or you can do what I'm going to do and just put them in the ground or you can add some bone meal to it you can add some ashes to it say so love ashes and or you can mix some coffee grounds into the soil around them to give them the acid they need now these are doing really really well in fact they're getting new leaves on them so it's been kind of fun to watch them and see how they um, how they grow and what they do. So definitely they're healthy and well worth doing this. And by leaving them taller, hopefully I won't accidentally dig them up when I clean up the garden in the spring. I'll have to make note of where they are and mark them out. So I have one, two, three, four, seven of them here with one that doesn't have hardly any roots on that we're going to put in anyhow and give it a go. So let's go plant these in the garden. I'll show you where I'm going to put them. And like I said, I'm just putting them straight into the ground to see how they do without a lot of chemicals because I usually try to avoid a lot of chemicals to naturalize plants in. And so I'm going to do that again with these. But um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with them. At least they rooted and everything. I do believe though, if you did them with um, root starter that in soil, they'd probably root much faster but it's kind of fun to watch them grow. So if you're not in a hurry, water is an easy method. It's quick and fast and you can start them right away. You just want to start them early enough in the season, depending on where you live, so that you can get them in the ground and they can um, sink their roots into the soil. So let's go put these in the ground. So we're going to run them right in here along the back of the fence. They will be somewhat sheltered, although there is wire fence here. There's still going to be some shelter here. Um, they're going to get full sun and they're not going to be bothered by any other plants in their way initially. I may end up moving some because I'm planting them tight, but that would be next year. But this is just to get them started and get them in the ground so that they can send down shoots and start settling in before winter. We haven't had our first frost yet, so it's a good time to get them in. They would have at least a couple months, if not longer, depending on our weather, to put down roots. So the easiest way to put these in is just to go ahead and take one of the roots, like this one here, 
and basically take your finger and make a spot for it and then put her in and push her down, cover over with dirt, soil, just like that. So easy. And if you want to, you can kind of tamp it in with your feet to make sure it's good and firm. This is all new soil that I've put in here. This is still the same mixture I've been using of sand, topsoil manure, because I love it. It works so good. So let's do the next one. And the reason I'm putting my finger down here to do this is to make it easier not to snap the roots off when I put this in. Because you could just shove it in like that and it would probably be fine. But I'm going to err on the cautious side and I'm just going to take my finger again and put it in and then mound it over. And this one needs a little bit more soil here to hold it in. And I need to bring a little bit more soil in. That soil's pretty thin there. But that should be good enough for it. Let's do another one over here. And this one we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to mound it up. And then I'll come back and add more soil on top to make sure they're firmly in place. And you can see they're handling the wind pretty good so far. Okay, now I'm going to go get some more soil and then I can mound them up better. Here is the sand and manure mix. So I've got to mix it in because I basically um, bought sand and then I bought the topsoil manure mix. So I add my 30% and then I just mix it in. The topsoil and the manure came already mixed. So that was really handy. So now I just kind of stir it all up so that it mixes in nice. And then I can spread it on the bed and they'll get the manure to help them grow and feed them. And the sand is great for drainage. And I really enjoyed this mix because it's very little sand, only 30%. It keeps the soil from getting too hard. It doesn't turn it into cement. And it just makes for a nice mixture to work with. So you can see when I reach down to the bottom, I get the sand. All right, so that soil should really help them. It's fresh new soil with manure and sand in it. And that should give them a really good start so that they can root in before winter. Now let's water them in. And you want to be gentle when you water them in because you don't want to knock them over. So just let them have some, let it soak in, come back, give them some more. And if you have your water running off like this, just put a channel there so it doesn't. You can also make a ring around your hydrangeas to keep the water in. That's also another method. We use that for trees and just give them enough so it doesn't overflow like it just did there.
All right, so they're all in place now. And I did put the Limelight Hydrangea tree in too that I got for half price at Home Depot. I have one more I need to plant because I'm redesigning this bed and improving my curves and stuff. Um, you're gonna see more hydrangeas and plants come in here and this bed's gonna be a different color. I haven't totally decided on it yet, but I have some ideas because I do have other hydrangeas in here and I believe these are limelights and you can see one over there. So it's totally getting a revamp. The nice thing is if I can leave three, two to three of the Annabelle hydrangeas here, once they root in next year, they will provide a screen because they're gonna get six to eight feet high and they will screen off this fence. And that's the goal to have something pretty that will screen the fence that's not a lot of work. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and you'll be seeing more coming for this flower bed as I revamp it. Right now I am sheet mulching it and I will do a video and show you how I'm doing the sheet mulching and putting soil over in another video. But for today, I just wanted to get these hydrangeas in and share that with you. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.